Tonight, we turn the spotlight on one of Canada's most successful figure skaters, Elvis Stoiko. There he is, making history as the first person to land a quadruple double jump combination to a standing ovation. We look back on those moments in our conversation, including the decisions that helped him break through. Elvis Stoiko joins me now in studio. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You know, I was watching an interview that you did uh, a while back, and, and I, was, I was surprised because you said that y you actually were interested in being a race car driver when you were a kid yep. and not a figure skater. So tell me how you got into figure skating. Well, I started when I was about four years old watching TV at a very young age. My parents uh, took me. I, I, I was watching TV around two and a half years old. Kids in, are into everything. So finally, by the time I was four, they took me to the rink. Uh, my mom got me out there, and then I just kind of went with it. But my neighbor used to race dirt bikes, yeah. and that was something. He lived on the bottom end of our street. We had a 50-acre farm, and I'd ride my bicycle to the edge, and I'd have this beautiful view, and I'd watch the races. And he would he would come and get me once in a while. He'd see me up there, and he'd bring me out and put me on the bike when I was like six, seven years old. Yeah. And I'd always bug my parents that I wanted a dirt bike. So finally, my parents got me a, a bike, and I got into that, but I, I was... I was always into to motorsports. That was my thing. And back in the like 70s, early 80s, there wasn't a lot of access to like go-karts and things like that. So it was tough to kind of get into that. But through my career in skating, it was always kind of aligned with it. I was mm. always doing something with dirt bikes. Um, and then later on got into karting and then did, did a lot of like sports driving and, and track driving and stuff like that. And kind of build up my, ex, you know, my experience level and skill level over the years. And it wasn't like I woke up one day and decided to do it it was something that was kind of going parallel with skating throughout my career it was so so you know when your parents were encouraging you to go into figure skating is that something that you push back on or were, were you like okay yeah I'll do that but I also want to do the the dirt bike thing yeah I, I, I what I enjoyed about the skating was it, it was very difficult and I loved the challenge of it yeah. and what I loved about it was the speed which was the which was very similar to getting on any a motorcycle or getting in a go-kart or anything like that with the head speed so I enjoyed doing that I loved the jumps and and feeling the the G forces of spinning and doing all the tricks so in a lot of ways there they are similar with, with that in mind um, then I you know had to choose one over the other to kind of focus on on, on one direction. Yeah. My parents, uh, my dad being a singer, my mom being a dancer, loving music and art, skating kind of took over. Um, I worked hard at that. That became the focus. Um, you know, as a dutiful son, that was what I focused on. And, uh, you know, we, I think we did pretty good at it. It was a team of yeah. us. You know, we worked really <laughs> hard. And, and uh, But I knew eventually one day that I wanted to, to get into the racing and, and do it not as a hobby, but as a, as a real career. You know, you're traveling long distances when you are skating and when you're training um where did that drive come from and did you ever get kind of tired of like the, the grind the daily grind absolutely i mean it's it's something of uh there's no there's no quick way of doing it for success as uh -huh. we all know there's it's the sacrifice my parents my mom got up in the morning 3 30 every morning i was on the ice at 5 30 I was there before school, I went to school, I ate, I, I did my homework, I changed in the car. It, w it was all of the grind to get there and the focus was on being the best I could be and then eventually seeing, well, I could probably be the best in the world at this if I really, you know, wanted to do this. And my parents said to me, there was, there was a moment where my parents were like, you have a chance. Yeah. If you want to do this, it was around nine or ten years old. And they said, if you want to do this, you can do it, but you got to give 100%. If you want to do it as a hobby, we'll, we'll be there for you, but we're going to give everything we got and let's, let's work on this. And I said, yeah, let's do it. So there was a moment for your parents, but was there a moment for you when you realized, yeah, you know, I could, I could be the best in the world? Yeah, there's like, there's, you, you have that mindset, you know, when you first start, you just enjoy the activity of uh -huh. doing it, you discover things about yourself and the thing you're like, oh, I can get good at this or yeah. having trouble with this, you can get frustrated and I wanna do, you see other people doing it easier than you, so you, you push yourself. And so there was a moment when I, when I started skating in Toronto and that was around nine or 10 years old, I was working with Mrs. Ellen Burke at the time and people said I had talent and I had a lot of heart and, and working hard and, and the work ethic. And right around the age of about 13 to 14 is when I was like, 
I can I think I have a shot at this like really mm. to make make the Olympics one day but there's always these times where you get to a point where you're like maybe I should quit like there there are moments that it, it gets so hard that you you have to you have to take a step back reset and then push through or you walk away from it and I and it, and it was something that I just I couldn't get I couldn't give up I was not a quitter and even with being different I was always the black sheep in skating I always had the the macho way of doing it I didn't have the balletic style I brought in the martial arts uh, you know I rode dirt bikes I did other other things like that yeah. I had a different different personality so um, and I didn't do it on purpose it's just who I was and who I am yeah. and eventually when I found who I was as a skater as an artist on the ice then things really blossomed that was like later on in my career when I was you know late teens early 20s huh. and, and and what was that like when you found kind of you know your identity on the ice it was it was a big moment because it was a self self-acceptance and then from that point you, you know, I started to see it around I got accepted more um, and I started to bring in a different crowd than just the, the regular group of figure skating fans that will always be there and then right. there was this other group of guys like my dad was blue collar like he, he he had his landscaping company and there'd be guys that were like welders and stuff I you know I'd be working with my dad in the summer and they'd come by hey Elvis we, we watch skating because of you man you like <laughs> we love what you're doing and I'm like these guys watch hockey and watch football and now I'm bringing them over to figure skating so they would never they said we well, wouldn't be caught watching figure skating but we watch because of you and and that was kind of cool it was different you know and I was glad I was I was part of that you you made the Canadian national team in 1990 for the first time uh, and not only that you unseated Kurt Browning uh, who uh, you're friends with now but I understand <laughs> that there, there was like there, there was a professional rivalry yeah. going on there yeah, yeah. For a little bit tell me what that was like and uh, how the friendship developed I mean, Kurt and I always had a, a respect for each other. We always knew that we're only as good as our competition. And I wouldn't be the skater today if it wasn't for him and vice versa because yeah. we just pushed each other. And it was amazing to have the two top skaters in the world in one country. And that, that was great for Canada. It was great for skating. Um, and, you know, 1990, I, I came onto the scene. I got the triple axle and, and I just came out in a blaze. I was just moving on up and, and uh, had outskated Kurt at nationals. Um, he still won, but there was this controversy of me and style I was very young at the time uh -huh. very green and uh, that's the the rivalry started there and it, and then it was four years later when I actually won nationals and and defeated Kurt and we went on to the world championships and or on to the on to Olympics and and but when we competed outside of Canada we competed as a team and that's something that wasn't just you know head-to-head -head was great in in our country but when we went out there we went against Kurt and Elvis against the world and that was something that we always enjoyed doing we always had fun with that and uh you know we, we've always been good friends and 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 yes there was a great rivalry but we had such a great respect for each other and i think that that's what brought a lot of great skating after us you know the jeff buttles and the, sure. and the patrick chans and you know keegan messings and, and, and that kind of that lineage where we came from you know we had the the brian orsers and you know what i mean so th that's the the lineage that that continues so i was just so fortunate that i was part of that journey with kurt and that we had such an amazing experience it wasn't like you know, we thought we were going to create this. It just happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to take you to another moment. In 1991, you became the first person to successfully land a quadruple double jump combination. Mm -hmm. uh, w when you landed that, uh, what went through your mind? I, I, well, it was funny. When I was entering the jump itself, um, I, it was a year that I, was, I had grown and gained weight and my body changed. I was 18 years old and I was kind of off on timing and, yeah. and I wasn't the, the, the same skater I was the year before. And I was landing the quad, you know, on and off and, and I was in the program, in competition, and I'm setting up for the jump and I, could, I totally felt it going in. I'm like, this feels like I'm going to do this. This feels really... And before I could finish the thought, like I, it just happened and I landed, did the double toe on the end and I almost stopped for a second, realized what I did and I continued with the program and I was like, oh my God, I just landed a quad combo. This is crazy. Yeah. And it just, it, it, not, it launched me to that next level uh, at the world level. And, and it just, even to this day, I still remember the feeling it was there in Munich. It was, it was so exciting. Let's talk about the Olympics and, and you know, what that was like. Do, do you... Uh, have that sense, a sense that you know you were talking about you know you and Kurt against the world did you always have that sense of national pride 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's you know Canada had such a had had such a great history of skaters, incredible skaters, not just male, female pairs dance it, over the years, and to be able to be part of that that generation at the time, and you know carrying the torch. And being the one there, it, it was it was an incredible uh, experience. I, I had the, I was fortunate enough to compete at four Olympic Games, and each one so different and so vibrant, and and such a such a learning experience. And and um, to be on the podium twice, yeah. uh, you know, and and it was it was such an incredible incredible time. I talk about the Olympics. You go to a World Championship, it feels like a big international. But yeah. when you go to the Olympics, it feels like the Olympics. You know, you step on the ice for the first time in practice, and the Olympic rings are on the ice you look up the olympic rings are everywhere you're reminded of where you are and then you're just like okay i gotta take a breath <laughs> and now i can focus on doing my job you still skate now but mm -hmm. less and you've recently turned to uh, race car driving yep. so let's talk a little bit about that and and your passion for high speeds <laughs> yeah it's, it's been in my it's been in my blood since i've been a kid yeah. dirt biking um when i was living in mexico i was racing go-karts and then raced in canada in the u.s was uh on the podium at nationals a number of times in in karting um and then ended up building two race cars with a good friend of mine from fast auto um luca solaroli we built two audi race cars been racing an endurance series and then now racing with um a race team by uh owned by stefan really of uh, really racing a german fellow an incredible um uh, crew chief uh and he got me into a prototype car called a revolution yeah and they're made in the uk and i had this incredible opportunity to do a test day in the car and did really well and then revolution said do you want to do you want to drive in spa and i'm like in belgium they're like yeah and i was like this is it's a big deal it's a big deal yeah. so i went there to learn and ended up placing ended up third in two races got fastest lap and the years of of, of touring when i was in the states I would have a couple days off. Those yeah. days off, I'd jump on a track and take some courses when I was down in, in Vegas. Oh, really? In yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so in those the times behind the scenes, I was training. I was doing uh, driver courses and studying and doing all of that to prep for this time instead of just out of nowhere, you know, become a race car driver. It doesn't work that way. So it's just for me, it's been, it's been a, an amazing journey. And, and this is my, what I want to do for my next career. You want to do it for your next career. Well, yep. you're, you're a bit of a renaissance man, I would say, because you also do acting. Mm -hmm. um, you are in a, a, the new CBC comedy series, but you're playing yourself. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. w w what is that like? I, the acting I've done since I was a kid too. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where you have the two sides of skating, where you have the athleticism um, and you have the artist. And then with the racing, you have the athleticism and the artist. And this allows me to be both. And the acting, I absolutely love. It's a self-expression. A lot of times in skating, you try to emote and show the emotion. But because of the technique and the technical aspect, sometimes you got to hold back a little bit. Yeah. you got to be the athlete. That when I'm playing a character, I can completely immerse myself in the human, humanness of those emotions yeah. and I can portray them. And I, I absolutely love that about the acting. And, and uh, I'm just fortunate I've had a, a great um, success in doing different shows and, and to be part of this new show one more time. Yeah. Uh, DJ Demers, it, it, we had such a great time on set and it was a lot of fun. And I don't usually do uh, cameo roles. I like to play characters. The script was so much, it looked so much fun, like so much fun that I was like, yeah, I got to do this. And my agent was like, I think this is a good one. It's a new good CBC show. So it's, I, I was just really excited about it. Haven't seen any of what oh, I've you haven't done. Seen it. Okay. I haven't seen what I've done yet. <laughs> so it's going to be, you know, hope people like it. It's fun. You're, you're, you're known by so many Canadians as, you know, uh, a, an icon of figure skating in this country. I, I wonder if it's difficult to, to break that mold a little bit sometimes and, and does that bother you at all or no? It, it is. You, it's a catch-22 because yeah. you you create this um, the persona and people see you a certain way. And, it, it, you know, I, I always say, um, you know, I'm a guy that skates. I'm not a skater. Right. It's something that I do. I want to reach out and just be the best at whatever I want to do. These are, these are the loves of my life. I love doing these things. And I just, I want to go after them. I have the, the, uh, the courage to go after them because it's not an easy thing to step out of your comfort zone. And I do it all the time. And that's what made me successful in skating. So I use that template and I apply it to the acting and I apply it to the racing. And, uh, you know, I just love what I do and want to share that and inspire people. 
uh, to go after their dreams and go after what they really want to do in life. Well, and that leads me to my last question. We've got a lot of great young athletes right now uh, headed to the next Olympics. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to younger athletes? It's don't, you got to focus on that grind. There's that daily grind and, and there are days where it's easy, but they're usually maybe one or two of those a month. It's, it's, the, it's the other ones that are hard. And the days that you don't want to go into the rink or you don't want to go to the track or whatever, it's really hard to get there. You got to think about the goal. You got to, how badly do you want that, that thing, that thing to get to, to be the best. It's a, always a grind to work those through. And eventually as you do that and you understand more, the physicality and the skill set that you want that next level starts to come. And it's little baby steps. And it's the one that just keeps keeps chipping away at it is the one that's going to be the have that success doesn't always be the one that has the most talent it's the one that's willing to chip away at it every single day Elvis Stoico appreciate you coming in thanks for having me